A Mars trip today takes six to eight months. That's half a year of deadly cosmic radiation, dwindling supplies, and zero rescue options. Elon Musk just announced Starship V4 will stretch up to 20% longer than V3. Sounds like a simple size upgrade, right? Wrong. This single change could cut that nightmare journey time in half and dramatically slash the death risk for the first Mars crew. How does making a rocket taller actually save lives? Let's dive right in. Here's what most people miss about Mars travel. It's not the distance that kills you, it's time. Every single day a crew spends in deep space, they're getting bombarded by cosmic radiation. We're talking about high energy particles that slice through the spacecraft hull like it's not even there. On Earth, our atmosphere and magnetic field block this. In space, you're naked to the universe. Six months of exposure, that's equivalent to getting multiple full-body CT scans every single week. The cancer risk skyrockets, bone density drops, your immune system starts failing. And here's the brutal truth. There's no hospital on the way to Mars, no rescue mission. If something goes wrong at the halfway point, you're 27 million miles from help in either direction. SpaceX knows this. NASA knows this. But until now, nobody had a real solution. That's what makes Starship V4 different. Let's talk numbers. Starship V3 stands 124.4 meters tall when fully stacked and carries about 1,600 tons of propellant in the upper stage. Technically, that's enough fuel to reach Mars. The Delta V required for a one-way trip from low Earth orbit is only 4 to 6 kilometers per second. V3 can do that. But here's the problem. That gets you a slow burn, a conservative trajectory. And that means 6 to 8 months of radiation exposure. It's like SpaceX built a car that can technically drive from New York to Los Angeles, but only at 30 miles per hour. Sure, you'll get there. But who wants to spend three weeks in a car? The first Mars crew can't afford that timeline. Every extra month in space increases the chance that someone gets seriously sick or that critical equipment fails. So what's the solution? More propellant, a lot more. Starship V4's upper stage will stand roughly 61 meters tall, nearly nine meters taller than V3. That's not just a cosmetic change. Those extra nine meters mean bigger propellant tanks. And bigger tanks mean V4 can carry up to 2,300 tons of fuel, about 700 tons more than V3. Why does this matter so much? Because now we're not limited to that slow four to six kilometers per second burn anymore. With 2,300 tons of propellant, Starship can perform what's called a high energy transfer, pushing Delta V up to seven to nine kilometers per second or potentially higher. That's the difference between a lazy coast and an aggressive sprint. The result? Travel time drops to just three to six months, maybe even less. You've literally cut the radiation exposure in half. You've cut the food and water requirements in half. You've cut the risk of equipment failure in half. And most importantly, you've dramatically improved the chances that the crew arrives healthy enough to actually do their job once they land. But there's a catch. To generate that kind of velocity, you need serious thrust. That's why V4 will mount nine Raptor 3 engines, three sea level variants, and six vacuum optimized engines. Together, they'll generate around 2,700 tons of initial thrust. Compare that to V3's six engines, and you start to see the scale of ambition here. Now, here's where things get really interesting. All that fuel I just mentioned, None of it launches with the Mars-bound Starship. It can't. A fully-fueled Starship is too heavy to escape Earth's gravity on its own. This is where orbital refueling comes in, one of the most complex operations SpaceX has ever attempted. Here's how it works. After the Mars Starship reaches orbit, it docks with a fuel depot, basically a giant gas station in space. That depot has been pre-filled by multiple tanker starships, each one launching from Earth, delivering propellant, and returning home. 
Think of it like relay runners passing a baton, except each runner is a 120-meter rocket. With Starship V3, you'd need somewhere between 8 to 14 tanker flights to fully refuel one Mars vehicle. That's 8 to 14 chances for something to go wrong. 8 to 14 launch windows. 8 to 14 weather delays. It's a logistical nightmare that eats up time and money. But when you apply that same stretch configuration to the tanker starships, everything changes. A V-4 tanker can deliver significantly more propellant per flight, potentially reducing the entire refueling operation to just five flights or fewer. Five launches instead of 14. That's a 64% reduction in mission complexity. And the refueling process itself? Once that Mars-bound starship docks with the depot, it can take on the full 2,300 tons in just one to two hours. Then it's free to depart immediately for Mars. Fewer flights, shorter timelines, lower risk, higher success probability. This isn't just an engineering improvement. It's a paradigm shift in how we think about deep space missions. SpaceX is essentially building the infrastructure for a Mars highway. And V4 is the vehicle designed to actually use it. But wait, if you're making the upper stage heavier, doesn't that create a problem at liftoff? After all, Super Heavy has to lift this entire stack off the ground. If the ship gains 700 tons of propellant, that's a massive weight increase. SpaceX's solution? Make the booster taller too. Super Heavy V4 is expected to reach about 81 meters in height, roughly equivalent to a 20-story building. That extra height allows it to pack in up to 4,500 tons of propellant more than 400 tons beyond what V3 carries. The engine count likely stays at 33 Raptor 3 engines, possibly 35. Combined, they'll generate approximately 10,000 tons of thrust at liftoff. For perspective, that's three times more powerful than the legendary Saturn V that took humans to the moon. Do the math. A fully fueled V4 upper stage weighs around 2,500 tons. Add the booster's mass, and you're looking at a full stack weight of roughly 6,700 tons. That gives Starship a thrust-to-weight ratio of about 1.49, meaning thrust exceeds weight by 49%. Why does that number matter? Because anything above 1.0 means the rocket can fly, but 1.49 means it flies aggressively. From the very first second of ignition, there's nearly 50% more thrust than gravity pulling down. The vehicle rises fast, clears the pad cleanly, and reaches orbit more efficiently. Less propellant wasted fighting gravity means more available for the actual Mars mission. Here's what I find most fascinating about all of this. SpaceX isn't just building a bigger rocket for the sake of it. They're solving the Mars equation backwards. Most people think you need infinite money to go to Mars. Elon's approach is different. Make it cheap enough that Mars becomes inevitable. Every design choice in V4 serves that goal. The stretched tanks reduce tanker flights. Fewer flights mean lower costs. Full reusability means you're basically only paying for fuel. Musk has suggested Starship launches could eventually cost as low as 2 to $3 million cheaper than a single Falcon 9 flight today. And here's the business model. Before Mars ever happens, Starship will make money launching Starlink satellites. Falcon 9 currently costs about $67 million per launch and carries maybe 20 to 23 Starlink satellites. Starship could carry 60 to 90 satellites at a fraction of the cost. Every flight saves SpaceX tens of millions of dollars. Multiply that over hundreds of launches, and suddenly you're funding a Mars program through operational profit, not investor hype. The moon becomes the economic stepping stone. Lunar contracts, base construction, fuel depots in lunar orbit, these aren't distractions from Mars. They're the revenue generators that make Mars affordable. SpaceX is building a transportation network, not just a rocket. So when does all this actually happen? Musk stated that Starship V4 will fly in 2027. If that holds true, SpaceX is maintaining a remarkably consistent development pace. 
V1 in 2023 to 2024, V2 in 2025, V3 in 2026, V4 in 2027. One major iteration per year. That's iPhone-level product cadence, except we're talking about the largest rocket system ever built. Each full stack costs an estimated $90 to $150 million to produce, with Raptor engines representing 30 to 40% of that expense. A single Raptor 3 engine now costs somewhere between $200,000 to $500,000, down from earlier estimates over $1 million. Compare that to NASA's RS-25 engine at $100 million each, and you see why SpaceX's approach is revolutionary. They're treating rocket engines like mass-manufactured products, not handcrafted artwork. The new Gigabay facility could theoretically push production to absurd levels. Musk once mentioned 10,000 ships per year. That's obviously aspirational, but it reveals the mindset. Build fast, build cheap, iterate constantly. So let's bring this full circle. Starship V4 isn't just 20% longer, because SpaceX wanted a bigger rocket. It's 20% longer because that's what it takes to keep humans alive on the way to Mars. Those extra nine meters translate directly into 700 more tons of propellant. That propellant cuts travel time from six to eight months down to three to six months. And that time reduction? That's the difference between arriving at Mars healthy or arriving with radiation sickness, bone loss, and immune system collapse. This is Elon Musk solving the problem everyone else ignored. Not with exotic shielding or science fiction technology, but with brutal engineering simplicity. More fuel, more thrust, less time exposed. It's elegant in the way only truly practical solutions can be. And here's what keeps me up at night. If SpaceX hits their 2027 timeline for V4, we're only three years away from seeing hardware that could realistically support the first crewed Mars mission. Three years. That's closer than the next iPhone generation seemed when the first one launched. The question isn't whether humans will reach Mars anymore. It's whether we're paying attention when it happens. If this breakdown gave you a new perspective on why V4 matters, hit that like button. Drop a comment with your thoughts. Do you think 2027 is realistic, or will V4 slip to 2028? And if you want to stay ahead of every Starship development as it happens, subscribe to Space Update 24 hours and turn on notifications. This is history unfolding in real time. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.